Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach from electricalexamcoach.com. And this is lesson 9.5 in our video series. And in this lesson, we're going to be learning about bundling adjustments and ambient temperature corrections. These are a subset of ampacity. And remember, ampacity is just how many amps the wire can handle safely under its conditions of use without exceeding its temperature rating. Bundling adjustments work like this. When wires are bundled, like in a pipe for example, they have less ability to dissipate the heat and it reduces how many amps the wire can handle safely. Ambient temperature corrections are like this. If wires are run in an extremely hot ambient temperature, it reduces how many amps the wire can handle safely. We're gonna learn about these one at a time. Let's get to it. Let's dive into bundling adjustments. Let's take a look at our primary opacity table. I want you to turn there now. And these values down below this table are true if, well, the question is if what? If you look at the paragraph above the table, the one that I said we would come back and look at later, it's got some parameters there. It says, hey, these are the opacities of these conductors if, and the first if that we're gonna look at is if there are not more than three current carrying conductors inside of a cable, pipe, or even buried in the earth together. Let's take a look at it. Let's imagine that we have a piece of conduit here and we pulled in a black, red, blue, and an equipment grounding conductors. What this table is saying is that those ampacity values listed down below in this table are true as long as you have not more than three current carrying conductors in a cable, pipe, or raceway. If you do have more than that, then we have to do what's called a bundling adjustment. Let's learn about our bundling adjustment table. Head to this respective table depending on your code cycle. When we get there, we're gonna find that it's very easy to read. Reading all of our tables from top to bottom, left to right, we're gonna start here on the left-hand side and this is our number of current carrying conductors. Let's imagine we have this conduit and we end up with six current carrying conductors. So we're gonna slide down until we find our range and we fall in the four to six range. Then we need to slide over and find our adjustment factor, which is just another demand factor which is something you're very familiar with at this point in the program. Let's imagine we have a wire that's 50 amps. We take that 50 amp wire and we multiply it by 0 0.80, which was our demand factor. And we end up with a wire that is now only good for 40 amps. What they're saying is because the amount of wires inside of this pipe or cable, that the wire cannot dissipate the heat safely. So you have to reduce how many amps the wire can handle. So the new allowable ampacity of this wire is only 40 amps. Up until this point, we've had all hot conductors inside of our conduit. But what happens if we add in a neutral? Is it considered a current carrying conductor? What about grounding conductors? Are they considered current carrying conductors? Well, let's learn how to count conductors now. Now let's learn about current carrying conductor counting. Because we're only going to be counting the current carrying conductors. You may get a question on your exam that gives you the number of conductors. That's easy. You're gonna to go to the tables and do the math. But you may get a question on your exam that asks you in a scenario of wires, how many of them are current carrying conductors? The first one's easy, all ungrounded conductors. All of the hots are going to be considered current carrying conductors under normal circumstances. The second one is the neutral of a line to neutral load. Meaning if we have a light bulb and it draws one amp on a 120 volt circuit, there's gonna be one amp going in on the hot and there's gonna be one amp flowing back on the neutral. So it is as well a current carrying conductor. Same thing with a three phase four wire neutral. We're not gonna be dinking around trying to calculate the unbalanced load. We're just gonna count it as a current carrying conductor. Then the three phase nonlinear neutral load. Nonlinear loads come from large fluorescent lighting or from large computer data centers, you're going to count its neutral as well. Grounding conductors, no, they do not count. And that's one of the easiest ones. You don't have to count those as a current carrying conductor. If we have no adjustment will be made if we have nipples that are 24 inches or less. Let's imagine we have a panel over here on the right hand side. 
we put a panel on the left side we want to run a short nipple that's 24 inches or less this does not count in our bundling adjustment now let's talk about choosing from the right column and this is the last step before we're actually able to start doing questions up until this point we've always chosen most of the time from the 75 degree c column now there'll be times that we choose from the 60 and this is where we start choosing from the 90. 99 percent of the time you're going to choose from the 90 anytime that you're doing bundling adjustments or temperature corrections we're going to choose from that 90 degree c column we're getting ready to do practice questions and you'll understand that more fully as we proceed what is the allowable ampacity of a number four copper conductor with nine current carrying conductors in a piece of one inch EMT. Step one, we're gonna verify that our conductors are listed in the 90 degree C column. We head to our primary opacity table on the copper side and we make sure that THHN is listed. If it's not listed there for the purpose of exam prep, I just want you to go to whatever column that it is listed in and do the math. Now, we're gonna find our starting ampacity in the 90 degree C column. We head to our primary ampacity table. It's wanting a number four conductor, so we start on the left-hand side. We're gonna come over and we're gonna tee off with the 90 degree C column, and we're gonna find out that it is 95 amps. That's our starting ampacity. Now, we must check for demand factors. Are there more than three current carrying conductors? There are, so we must apply the demand factor. We're going to head to either table depending on what code cycle you're in. It is our bundling adjustment factor table. And when we get there, we're going to start on the left hand side. We come down and find our number of current carrying conductors. Then we cross over and find our demand factor. Now we can get to work. We take our starting ampacity, we multiply it by the demand factor, and that gives us a new allowable ampacity of 66.5 amps. A wire that was once good for 95 amps because of it being bundled in this pipe is now only good for 66.5 and we select A. Great job! What is the allowable ampacity of a 1-aught XHHW copper conductor with 13 current carrying conductors in a piece of 2-inch RMC? Step 1, we're going to verify that our conductors are listed in the 90 degree C column. When we head there, we find that XHHW is listed. So we're gonna find our starting ampacity. We head to our primary ampacity table. We're on the copper side. We start until we find one aught on the left. Then we cross all the way over to the 90 and we find that it's 170 amps. Now we check for demand factors. Are there more than three current carrying conductors? There are. So we must apply the adjustment factors that are listed in these tables. We go to our adjustment factor table. We're gonna start on the left-hand side and find our number of current carrying conductors. Then we cross over and find that it's 50%. We take that and do our math. We take our starting ampacity multiplied by the bundling adjustment factor. Then we're gonna have a new reduced ampacity of 85 amps. Great job. What is the allowable ampacity of a number six THHN aluminum conductor with six current carrying conductors in a piece of three quarter inch EMT. Step one, we're gonna verify that our conductors are listed in the 90 degree C column. We head there now, but we're on the aluminum side because the question requested aluminum conductors and we find that THHN is there. Now we find our starting ampacity in the 90 degree C column. We head to our primary ampacity table on the aluminum side and we slide down until we find a number six then we're going to come over and we're going to cross over and find that our starting ampacity is 55 amps but we must check for demand factors are there more than three current carrying conductors there sure are so we're going to head to our bundling adjustment factor table when we get there we're going to find our range of conductors then we're going to cross over to the demand factor now let's just do the math we take our starting ampacity multiplied by 0 0.80, and that gives us a new reduced allowable ampacity of 44 amps. Let's get to it. That's the end of lesson 9.5. I want to let you know that you're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Keep grinding. If you need anything from me, whether it's mentoring, coaching, 
or any way that I can help you in life or business, you can always just email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com or shoot me a call or a text at 423-895-3247. If you don't get me, leave a voicemail and shoot a text. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you, and you will in turn add value to others. Let's get to it.